the amount was was surprising. Yeah, really, really heavy growth. Uh, you know, big patches. The Guam Environmental Protection Agency, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, the Department of Agriculture, and the University of Guam are all looking into what's causing a massive bloom of algae on the backside of Cocos Island. Brent Tibbetts is a fisheries biologist with the Department of Agriculture. He was one of several people who visited Cocos Island Tuesday after receiving a report from Maritzo Mayor Ernest Chargoloff and fishermen in the area about a massive concentration of algae. Matter of fact, the algae was several feet thick and a couple hundred feet in length. We documented it shading over coral and other types of algae and things that are that are normally down there. Uh, and if this population were to exist for a long time, it could negatively impact other things down there. Guam EPA Administrator Eric Palacios was also part of the group. His agency will be going back to Cocos Thursday to continue their assessment and determine whether nutrients in the water could be contributing to the explosion of algae. The most prudent thing to do was to collect samples and we'll run it through our lab to to give us um, a very clear answer as to what is causing that algae to be present, especially in that, uh, that large volume. While it's not clear whether it could be nutrients in the water, according to Tibbetts, other theories for the blooms could be unusual warm water temperatures. Also this year we did not have a very good manyahuac run and the algae that's growing uh, all over the place down there is a favorite food of Minyahawk. Tibbet says, though, what's happening at Cocos isn't an isolated incident because they've received reports of blooms all along southeastern Guam. From uh, Mariso up to Pago Bay, just about. There's been reports of, of big growths of this algae all along that coast. University of Guam Associate Professor of Marine Biology and an expert in the systematics of marine algae, Dr. Tom Schills, has been actively researching the blooms over the last several years. He's heard from island fishermen and resident scientists that say they haven't seen this type of alga on Guam for over 50 years. Matter of fact, he also visited Cocos a month ago and saw the algae blooms for himself. Right now, it remains unclear what specific alga it is. I think the first step we have to undertake is trying to identify um, the identity of the species and then try to verify is, if this alga is native or not to Guam uh, or by extension the larger Micronesian region. Um, and then, yeah then we can kind of like have an idea is this alga invasive or not and what should management strategies or actions be. The real question is for the future is like is it going to be the same next year? Is it even going to be worse? Because now in three successive years uh, if one might call it a problem, the problem has become worse, yeah. So the area that has been impacted has grown and a lot of fishermen are definitely concerned because we get a lot of calls from fishermen about this alga and wanting to know more about it. Dr. Schills in the meantime will be working to identify the DNA sequencing of the algae to determine its identity, which in turn will hopefully shed light on its origin. For the time being, researchers don't believe the algae blooms are poisonous but could cause a problem for fishermen using talaza or a hook and line.